Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Lloydminster RCMP are investigating an early morning shooting. Police say it happened around 8.30 a.m. in the 4600 block of 47th Avenue. RCMP say an adult male was shot outside on the sidewalk and was seriously injured. It happened after the victim was approached by a group of people in a small black car. There was a brief exchange and the man was shot. Police say those involved were known to each other and there is no risk to the public. Anyone with information is asked to contact RCMP or Crime Stoppers. Six more people have died from COVID-19 in Saskatchewan, including a person in their 80s from the Northwest Zone. There are 183 new cases in the province, with 18 of those in the Northwest. The subzone that includes the immediate Lloydminster area has 13 new cases, with 116 listed as active. 4,663 cases are active province-wide. 144 people are in hospital, with seven in the Northwest. 27 people are in intensive care. 279 more people have recovered. Changes implemented by Measurement Canada has Atco Electric proposing the city of Lloydminster purchase 75 traffic lights within the city. Eric Fay has more. Power to traffic lights owned by Atco was previously billed to the city, but inconsistent tracking methods led to varied costs, prompting Measurement Canada to take action. It's been brought forward by Measurement Canada to Atco's attention. They brought it to our attention. It needs to be resolved. You know, it's, people will say, well, was there another option? Really, there isn't another option that the administration could present to us other than we could delay it, and then where would we go from there? If Council approves the purchase, the $52,000 cost will come from reserves since the lights were not included in the budget approved last week. The move will save the city $2,300 monthly in maintenance fees, covering the cost of the purchase in 23 months. Really, it's a two-year payback on an investment, and hopefully, based on the information provided through ATCO and our administration, those are 25-year lights, give or take 20 years. So we're money in the bank, and I think that uh, that will come to council back uh, as a formal, uh, it'll have to come to council for resolution. The city would not be required to hire ATCO to provide maintenance on the lights and Councillor Aaron Buckingham suggested issuing a request for proposal if council moves forward. Any chance you get to have uh, RFPs go out there and have all of our local people that can supply those products and services uh, have the chance to bid on it, that's important to me and I think it's important to council. We want to try and make sure those things are available to everybody to bid on. The purchase will apply to lights on city-owned traffic signal facilities. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. The COVID-19 pandemic and low price of oil slowed down many sectors of Lloydminster's economy, including the real estate market, but things have been improving as of late. Jace Mackey has more. I'm joined today with uh, Dave Jarvis. He's a sales rep for Royal LePage at Muffsgrave Industries here in Lloydminster. Dave, thanks for taking some time to talk with me today. My pleasure. So obviously 2020 has been an interesting year for a lot of different industries and the real estate industry is no exception. Can you kind of take me through how the market outlook was at the beginning of the year and uh, kind of how things went? Well, we, we certainly saw um, a change over the last five years since 2015. And we were seeing a, a fair recovery in 2019. The market um, certainly was not recovered to the point where, where we were um, prior to that but we were seeing uh, a leveling off of, of pricing. There was still downward pressure, but less homes on the market for sale and, and uh, more buyers entering the market. So we were anticipating a fairly strong 2020 um, in, uh, in January of this year, 220. And obviously there was a lot of uh, events that happened to cause things to change. How did things change in the market in April and then obviously into the summer as well? Uh, so so typically your spring is your busier time in the market. There's people moving uh, because of schools and such. That's when the transfer season is. And uh, let's face it, we all live in the winter climate and anything to do in the spring is good. And buying a house seems to be a, a pretty strong thing to, uh, that happens in Canada. So in the spring of last year, 2019, we saw about 140 houses uh, sell between mid-March and the end of June. And I'm talking the Lloydminster city proper itself in all price categories. Mm -hmm. And then this spring, of course, well, uh, we saw that cut in half. So, uh, which really surprised us as well. We didn't think we'd have any sales at all in the spring uh, as the reaction to the COVID was uh, unfolding in Canada. But we saw roughly 65 houses sell uh, in that same time frame as last year when there was 140. So about half. 
And uh, the interesting thing is, as we're finishing off the year, we're going to see numbers very, very similar to last year as far as the number of homes sold. Uh, the year hasn't finished yet, but uh, I believe we're going to get very, very close to the same numbers as last year. So that means the remainder of the year, we were busier than 2019, even despite all of the things that have happened in, in Alberta with oil and COVID. So that's a, that's a positive story for us to see that uh, we saw the recovery from that spring uh, stumble. And why do you think the market was able to recover from that stumble? Do you think it was that there wasn't very many people buying houses in March and April and then they were catching up? Or what do you think that was? I, you know, to give you exact reason why we, we'd be guessing, but I would say a strong, strong reason is the interest rates. Uh, we've got interest rates now as low as 1% or 0.99% for, uh, for buyers that are in a high uh, the government insured mortgages. They're, they're at 1% now. But certainly there's been a lot of people coming into the market and that's showing in what is selling. It's, it's under 400,000 that seems to be the busier portion of the market. And we've seen uh, sales fairly consistent in $50,000 jumps through the market from 150 to 400,000. Uh, each of those areas getting roughly the same amount of attention as far as buyers, but over 400,000, certainly we've seen a, a reduction this year in, in, in houses sold compared to last year. So if your house is priced properly and it's priced in, in, in that part of the market, we've seen uh, an increase of sales, less days on the market and a tightening of, of price uh, from where it sells and from where it was listed. Looking forward into 2021, what do you project the market's going to be like? Are we going to see things continue on the pace that we're on? I believe we're actually going to see an increase in, in um, uh, activity in our marketplace. I think that, uh, you know, personally, I'm, I, I, it's my crystal ball. Uh, I think we're going to see some recovery in the oil sector. Um, I'm hoping that the the uh, Synovus and Husky uh, merger is uh, beneficial to this region. Uh, I believe we have assets here that will will make them money, and therefore our assets they'll want to uh, invest in. Uh, with that and other industries that are coming to Lloydminster, uh, we are starting to see um, I think some stability in the marketplace. And, uh, you know, I, I know there's lots of people out there that'll say, oh my gosh, there's no stability. My job's not stable. And there's certainly a lot of that. As, mm -hmm. as we know in Alberta, we've, we've seen a real um, issues, some, a lot of issues. But I think this year, um, our, uh, our prospects are that there'll be some modest rain gains. And I think we're going to look for, forward to a pretty good 220, 221. And do you have anything else that you would like to add today before we end things? It's the, uh, I think everybody got, got, uh, COVID in the, in the spring it hit hard. Uh, it's been uh, tiring for everyone through uh, this industry and a lot of others, but I think we're all going to get through it here and we just got to stay positive and, and uh, move life ahead. Uh, there's no sense uh, hiding. Uh, we need to take proper precautions, of course, but in uh, house sales and, and uh, such, there's no better time to buy a home. And prices are, are certainly depressed from the last five years. Uh, we've seen a decrease in about, of about $65,000 in value across on average. And um, uh, interest rates are, are at a, a, a level that makes sense to, to go into home ownership if, if that's uh, something you've been thinking about doing. Thank you so much, Dave, for taking some time to talk with me today. Have a good day. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Welcome back. For the 40th annual gift of Christmas, the Olive Tree is in need of more donations from residents, and they hope to get unwrapped gifts for all ages. I chatted with them for more. I'm speaking with Jana Thompson from the Olive Tree. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Shelby? I'm very good. So now with the 40th annual gift of Christmas, the Olive Tree is looking for a big push on more donations right now? Yes, we're actually very short on toys right now. Um, last year we distributed almost 800 individual toys and stuffies to children in the Lloydminster area. So we're, we were a little nervous this week when we started wrapping, so we're hoping that just more and more donations come in by the end of the week. 
And what all kinds of toys are you looking to hopefully get from donations? We need obviously like a variety of ages. We're very short on baby toys, um, anything that is kind of girl age eight to 12. Um, but we are short on all ages right now, but those are the two hardest hit areas. right? And has the olive tree received some support and donations so far since this started? Yes, for sure we have. Um, it just seems like it's a little less than last year, but obviously there is certain circumstances that are coming to play. Um, and some people aren't comfortable shopping, so they've made monetary donations. So we've been able to go and purchase some as well, um, which has been amazing, but we are still short. So we're hoping that to just do a push and get those gifts wrapped and packed up and ready to send out. And I'm sure it probably slowed down this year due to COVID-19. What safety precautions from COVID will be taking place when wrapping the gifts and handling them? But it's actually the majority of it is just our team doing it this year, um, just due to the risk factor of having larger groups in. So that's why we started earlier this week and then we can actually just slowly push through um, and get them all wrapped by the time we need to do the family bags and pack them up. And can you tell us more about all the drop off locations for the gift of Christmas? Yeah, so if you head on to the Facebook page, we actually just did another post. You can check out all the drop off locations on there. Um, we love it because you get to go into the local businesses that are obviously trying to support the gift of Christmas and you can support them by also shopping there. So it is a whole local theme um, and we truly love that because we are a local grassroots organization and we're happy and excited to be a part of it every year and we're thankful for the drop off locations still willing to do it concerning what's happening and going on in the kind of the community this year. And with the toys being dropped off, you also ask that residents include batteries with them, am I right? Yes, please. Um, lots of toys do actually come with them, but if you notice that they don't, please include them. We've obviously went and purchased them to make sure the kid or the child, sorry, that is opening the gift can still use it that morning just in case. Um, but it is obviously a great thing to purchase as well. Um, sometimes we just have people donate boxes of batteries just to go with the toys. So <laughs> whatever you feel led to do, um, we will gladly accept it. Um, and just as a reference point to all of these toys get distributed to the Catholic School Division, the Public School Division, and the Salvation Army for all of their Christmas hampers. So it's a big job, but it's, we love doing it. Is there anything else you want to add for residents to know about? Yeah, they can obviously drop off at our location. Um, we still need stuffies as well. So if they want to do that instead of a toy, that's fine. And they can obviously donate online as well. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jenna. Yeah, thanks for having us. Now here's our Blake Nath for this week's pet project. Welcome back, everybody. I'm joined once again this week uh, in Pet Project with Becca Lawrence from the Lloyd Minster in District Community SPCA. Becca, how are we doing today? I'm doing really good. How are you? We're doing great. So who do we have here, <laughs> this big fluffy ball who was running around <laughs> earlier? Yeah, this is Gala. She uh, She's a Pyrenees cross, we would probably say. And uh, she's just a big, giant teddy bear. Everybody here loves her. Uh, so we're just currently trying to find the perfect home for her. That's beautiful. Uh, she's obviously good with people because while we were talking off camera, she kept trying to like distract you and get pets <laughs> and was was very much so looking for love. So is it safe to assume she, she's good with most people? Yes, yeah, humans are her favorite sort of thing. She, she doesn't really play with toys all that much or she doesn't really care for other dogs, um, but the, she she loves her people. Beautiful. And uh, does she still get along with the other animals? Like, it's hard to imagine her picking a fight with one of the cats or the dogs. Is she pretty good in that sense? <laughs> yeah, like the like dogs, she, she doesn't care for. She can go her whole life without ever meeting another dog, and I think she'd be perfectly fine with that, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, and cats, I don't think <laughs> we have too much of an uh, too much of an issue with. Um, she we, uh, like we don't know how exactly she would be with the cats, but uh, I don't see a huge issue. Maybe when they're running, she might chase them, kind of thing. But 
but yeah, currently it's just uh, just dogs she doesn't care for. That's understandable. I have a dog at home and she uh, tolerates other creatures and that's about the extent of it. So I get where you're coming from. Uh, so how are you guys doing for numbers right now? I know you guys have been so full of cats lately. Are you guys still at capacity or have you managed to get a few out the door? Where are we sitting with that? Yeah, actually. So last week we were able to do 13 more adoptions and not too many have come in. So we are looking really good. We, Zoe, our, um, you know, our operations manager, she was able to call quite a few people off the list yesterday. So we're, we're finally starting to make a little bit of a dent in that, in that waiting list. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'm assuming you still just have a couple of dogs hanging around. You didn't have a big influx of strays or anything in the last week. No, we had a, like we had a couple strays come in, but they all found their way their way home. So their owners were were great and came and picked them up. But uh, yeah, so we we still just have the same group of dogs right now. Perfect. Well, that's really good to hear. So on to our you know upcoming special events, Becca. So the Jail and Bale is coming up this week, correct? Yes, this Friday. Yeah. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> I know we're all very excited around the office here. Uh, Connor is gearing up. He's getting suited. He's been talking about it all week. He's very excited to take part. Uh, <laughs> so how are things looking for that, Becca? Is everything on track to, you know, be a, another stunning year for the Jail and Bale? Yeah, like uh, we, we have a little bit of a lower number of participants. So obviously, you know, we kind of expected that. So we're, we're trying to make up for it in a, a silent auction. So we, we have been able to collect quite a few donations from the surrounding, uh, like all of our businesses here in town, which is amazing. You know, they, you know, so close to Christmas and, you know, the times the way that they are, we're really, really happy. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're really happy with people still choosing to donate and being gener generous enough to still donate for us. Well, that's good to hear, Becca. So uh, are you guys still accepting applicants? Say somebody who's watching tonight decides, hey, you know what, I'm free on Friday and I would love to help with the jail and bail. Are you still taking applications? Are you still taking silent auction items or have we kind of closed for the season now? No, no, I think we're still, you know, I think maybe the night before we might kind of post some of the things that we have up for silent auction. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a lot of great stuff. But, uh, you know, if it's, if it comes in on Thursday, then it comes in on Thursday. We're happy to, we're happy to accept it. And if anybody wants to participate, same thing. If it's, you know, if it's Thursday and we can still post them to the website, we will do it. Be Beautiful. So anybody out there, please, if you're willing to help, get in touch with the SPCA. It's a great cause, and this is always one of their best events of the year. Uh, Becca, just one last thing before we go. Are you in need of any physical items right now? Any sort of, I know you always say blankets, laundry detergent, <laughs> anything else on the list? Uh, you know, garbage bags is another big one that we always go through a lot of. Um, our kitten food seems to be getting a little bit lower again. You know, we still have a good uh, number of kittens in, sh in foster right now, so we're sending all that out. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much all we need for, for items right now. Beautiful. All right, so if you guys are out shopping, you see garbage bags or kitten food on sale, maybe pick up, you know, an extra bag for the SPCA or always, you know, they, all, they will always accept your money. Always monetary <laughs> donations are appreciated <laughs> and welcome. So uh, we're all out of time for this week, but thank you once again, Becca, for taking the time to speak with us. Hope the jail and yeah. bail goes well, and we'll speak with you again next Tuesday to talk about how all that all went. So thank you again, <laughs> yeah. Becca. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Manage your waste and recyclables with Quick Pick Waste Disposal. 100% locally owned and proud to serve and support the communities we call home. Quick Pick, the convenient solution to avoid pollution. One year ago, the ACAC was rolling in full force, and so was the Lakeland Wrestlers women's volleyball team. Evan Kenny looks back on the success of the team and one individual who went above and beyond. One year ago, the wrestlers were riding atop the ACAC North. The women had won their past eight matches in a row, and in that span had only dropped five sets. We have a little bit of depth on our team as well, and you know, I, I try to reiterate to my team all the time that it takes a team to win we you know you, you have your six or seven starters that uh, they get to play the majority of the time but you know when when crunch time comes you need role players you need people that can go in and and do some different things yeah. 
While the team was playing well as a whole, fourth year outside hitter Bailey Wheeler went off for a career high and a new school record. Wheeler had 24 kills in one match, setting a single match record for most kills. You know, when I recruited Bailey, um, I, I told her it was going to take a little bit of time, but with, with her athletic ability and, again, being left-handed, um, I, I told her that there would be a time where she would potentially be the best player in our league. She, she's had just an unbelievable semester. The performance for the former setter turned outside hitter helped set her up to finish the season with 246 kills, 7th in the ACAC, and finished first in the league in hitting percentage. With the current ACAC season cancelled, Wheeler will retain one year of eligibility and potentially play a fifth season in 2021. Evan Kenny, Primetime Local Sports. I'm joined here with Dr. Neki Jamal with Wayside Dental Clinic. Now, the Think First Lloyd campaign recently raised more than $8,000 for the olive tree. So what was your reaction to seeing how much money was raised? First of all, I was blown away. I, I, man, for every hundred ideas I have, 99 are just garbage. So like, it's kind of cool that one worked. Um, um, I originally thought I was going to sell like, like 15 boxes and then I'd be left with all this coffee and jam and Spiro sauce. And I'd be like, whatever, I'll eat it anyway. Right. And then it, it's crazy. Cause like we put it on, I, I partnered with Mindy at Brixton. First of all, go buy some shoes. Her shoes are amazing. I love her. Um, and she helped so much. She's like, man, let's, let's get this huge. And, and we had a goal of like a hundred boxes. And so we bought everything and then we, uh, uh, it sold out in six hours and I was shocked. And then she called, she's like, Nick, we got to make like more. We got to make more right now. And then we made another hundred for like the next day and it sold in less than an hour. And so I was, it was, I was just, you know, I'm humbled by the generosity of this community. And that's what it always comes down to. And man, I love Lloyd Minster because this is what it's all about, right? And for somebody who doesn't know, can you explain what this campaign is and how does it work? Um, well, Think Lloyd First was, it's, it's a movement put on by the, the city and it's, uh, um, they just want to like, you know, a shop local uh, type, type mentality. And, and this year we need to really focus on that. And so like, we all got to take the pledge to buy everything local and, you know, shut down your Amazon accounts and, and, uh, and make sure you shop local. And, and so I just wanted to take it one step further, not only shop local, but support our charities that need us now more than ever. And yeah, you know, you just mentioned this, but why did you really feel like it was important to help out the olive tree? Um, well, we've always been like a strong supporter of the olive tree. Instead of just writing a check this year, I wanted to invest in the community and at the end of the day, give them the same amount of money, right? So I really feel it was like a double win. Like we got to, we got to pour, you know, $8,000 into the community and then give an $8,000 donation right back to the olive tree and support local businesses and, and it's just not the money it's it's the mentality right like hey get your coffee at prairie and lily uh, spiros has amazing sauce did you know soup de jar sells popcorn which is to die for buzz about the hive honey is a local school program honey like it's it's all things that we all should be we should we should all know about right but yeah around the holidays celebrating local businesses and making sure people around the community are buying their products is something that you must have really wanted to drive home with residents absolutely and i i'm just like i love the local entrepreneurial spirit because it all gets injected right back into the economy you know that if you buy something from brixton or you buy something from prairie lily coffee it goes to their families and goes right back into our community if we're going to build our city back up and build its tax base and build its, you know, ability to, to, you know, shovel roads and, and, and you know, give us the service we need to build up our local businesses. And this is what it's all about, right? As you mentioned, the first round of boxes sold out pretty quickly. So will there be a future when more boxes available for residents? Um, you know, it was a huge success. And I was, I was at the office till about 10 p.m. last night putting boxes together. So just so you know, they're packed with love by me and myself. So <laughs> um, we will try. Um, the vendors are all backed up. Like we're, we're still begging for them to give us all the stuff yet. 
they're making it. And that's, that's right. So it takes time to make and I 100% uh, do this project again. And uh, I want to see it grow. And I want to put more producers in the box and highlight other businesses in the community because I just, it, it was hard to pick these ones in the first place to put in there. So, yeah. And is there anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, um, I, I want to add that that um, um, Brixton Shoes did like uh, they they helped out so much with this, and they kind of sold everything online, and uh, they were a huge huge help. And I'm so glad to partner with them. And I want to thank um, the city for you know coming up with this campaign and and supporting me to to do all this stuff. And and really comes down to our Lloyd Minster family. And just because we're neighbors, we're family, and we're all in this together, and we're all going to get through this together. So uh, just you know, keep your smile on your face, and I can see you smiling underneath your mask. So that, that's all. That's all I want to say. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, Naki. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Hey.